Hello everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how to download and install Foundry Virtual Tabletop. I'm going to show you how you can share it out with your players and how you can set up your first game. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make sure that you have a copy of Foundry. Uh, you can go to foundryvtt.com and then click the purchase button. Uh, so you can see I've already purchased my copy here. Uh, so let's go ahead and download. I'm going to go to the hamburger over here and I'm going to click download software. And then it, it will have multiple versions here. You're going to want to go with uh, the latest stable release, which is version 11 at this point, 309. Go ahead and click download and save. Depending on your browser, of course, that will either show up over here on the top right, it could show up down here in the bottom left, but once it's finished downloading, we're going to go ahead and run that. Okay, so let's go ahead and run that. We'll agree to the license. We'll install it in the default folder. Okay, so that took about uh, two to three minutes, uh, but it did finish. So we're going to go ahead and click finish here and we'll leave run Foundry Virtual Tabletop checked. So it will pop up once we click finish. Okay, now it has popped up <clears throat> and it's asking us for our license key. So we're going to go back to our Foundry portal and we'll scroll down and under purchased software licenses is where you'll find your software key. So go ahead and copy that and paste it right in here and click submit key. Once again, we're going to agree to the licensing and user licensing. Uh, they're going to ask if you want to share data with Foundry. I usually decline. I always decline these. And just like that, we have Foundry installed. Now we notice there is a exclamation point up here in the configure. So let's go ahead and click on that. And it's saying we need to set up an administrator password. So let's go ahead and create our password here. We can scroll down here and see if there's anything we want to change. But everything here looks fine to me. So I'm going to go ahead and click save configuration. Modifying these configurations will require you to restart your server in order for them to take effect. Go ahead and click yes. So let's close out here. And now we have reopened Foundry after closing it out. And here is our administrator password. Go ahead and type that in. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to install a game system. So this will depend entirely on what you plan to play, whether it's Pathfinder, Dungeons and Dragons, Everyday Heroes. So go ahead and click Install System. And we're going to use Everyday Heroes as this example. If you're not familiar with Everyday Heroes, you should check them out. You can look at the link in my description. They have a modern D20 system that's based on blockbuster films. Uh, you might enjoy that. So go ahead and check that out with my link in the description. So go ahead and click install here. And just like that, it is installed. Now, if you have a module that you already purchased that you want to install that has a game world in it, then you can go ahead and click install world here. Otherwise, we're going to go ahead and click create world. We're going to name our world. We're going to select our game system. And if we want, we can upload an image path, which will show in the background. So we click on that and then we click choose file. And we can import our file here. And then say select file. We can go ahead and schedule our next session if we want. We don't have to do that. We could also add in a world description. We're going to skip that as well, but we're going to go ahead and click create world. Okay, now we have our first world. We'll go ahead and click to launch it. Now you'll see at this point there's only one user in here, which is the game master. We've not set a password for this game. It's not going to be the same as the administrator password that we've already set. So right now it is blank. So go ahead and click join session. 
and now we're in our world we can see it's blank at this point we have no encounters no maps no actors no items etc but it does show down here uh, that you can send invitation links to your players go ahead and click on invitation links now what you're going to see here is a local network which is if somebody were sitting in the same house as you how could they connect to your computer to play with you so we're not going to do that we're going to assume that our players are playing online and instead we'll look at our internet and it says our your connections appear to be closed so this is where things get a little bit technical the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to set a static ip address on your computer so let's go ahead and we can see that our current ip address is 192.168.1.183 we're just looking at this octet of numbers here 192.168.1.183 now we're going to come down and we're going to look for our network icon this could be shaped like a computer it could be shaped like the wi-fi symbol but it is this one here and we're going to right click that and we're going to say open network and internet settings and we're going to go to change adapter options we're going to right click on our on whichever connection we're using in this case we're using the Wi-Fi we're going to go to the properties we're going to look at internet protocol version 4 and click on properties and actually there's one more thing I want to do before we fill this out we're going to open command prompt by coming down to the start button and typing CMD and here's your command prompt go ahead click that now we're just going to type I P C O N F I G I P config space forward slash all and we can see that we have our IP address here we have our subnet mask so we're going to keep those two things as we type them in here so we're going to start with that use the we're going to switch to use the following IP address 192.168.1.183 and our subnet mask was 255.255.255.0 which came in by default now we're going to look at our default gateway which is 192.168.1.1 we're going to keep all of these exactly as we see them and for our DNS servers there are lots of DNS servers out there you could choose you could use Google's and you could use OpenDNS and there are many others I'm going to use first open dns as my preferred and then i'm going to use google these ip addresses are available for everyone to put in as your dns server so don't be afraid to use these the only thing you're going to want to do is make sure that you have filled out the top part uh, according to what you found in command prompt so i'm going to use 208.67.222.222 which is open dns and then i'm going to click 8.8.8.8 which is Google and click OK and now you're going to want to make sure you're still online so go ahead and open up an internet browser and we're just going to switch tabs here just to see if we're still connected here and we are so we're good there so we're still online so if you made it this far you're in good shape next thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to port forward so let's take a look again in foundry and you can see this colon 3000 after the number um, that's basically telling you i want to go to 192.168.1.183 i want to go to that ip address and i want to do it on port 3000 so don't worry too much about what that means we're just gonna we just know we need to port forward 3000 is the port or 30,000 is the port so we're gonna port forward the way we do that is we need to get into our router now back in command prompt we saw that our default gateway was 192.168.1.1 so that would be our router that, that's our default gateway that's our router that is the next jump we go to 
from our computer to get to the internet. So we're going to open a browser and we're going to type in what we saw for our default gateway. So in this case, it was 192.168.1.1. Your case may be different. And it says your connection is not private, which is okay. We're just going to another device on our local network. There's nothing to be afraid of here. So go ahead and click advanced and click proceed. And now we're gonna to need to find our router password. So this could be on the back of your router. You may have already changed it, but once you have that, go ahead and put that in here. And again, it may not look like this. You may have a different router than a Verizon router. You may have Comcast, in which case you might've accessed it from 10.1.10.1. But once you have your password, go ahead and type that in here and click login. Now we're gonna to go to advanced. And this may be different. Again, on every, every router is gonna be different. Um, but we're, what we're gonna be looking for is uh, it's usually under the firewall section or the advanced section. So let's go ahead and look here We're going to be looking to find port forwarding Okay, so here we have port forwarding. Let's go ahead and click that. So we're going to create a rule We're just going to go ahead and call this rule foundry We know that the port that they wanted to use was 30,000. So we put that in the protocol is going to be TCP there are a bunch of options of what it could be, but you're going to select TCP. So port 30,000 on TCP. And then it's gonna ask us what address we want to forward to. So we're going to put in 192.168.183, which is our computer. And we're gonna tell it to forward to that port. And we're gonna say this is always available. And we'll click save. So we've saved that rule and you may need to click apply changes. Go ahead and do that. And we'll go ahead and come back to Foundry. And let's refresh and see, there we go. We've got our green icon. Now I'm not going to show you um, my hidden IP address. Uh, there are external IP addresses, uh, meaning the IP address uh, of your house that faces out into the internet. And then there are internal IP addresses, which is the IP address of your computer. This is my internal IP address. Uh, I can give that to anyone because there are millions of computers around the world on the 192.168.1.network. network. It's internal. Giving that out is not something you need to worry about. But when it comes to your internet IP address, you don't want to share that with, with everyone. You're just going to share that with your players so they can access your game. So we're gonna go ahead and click here and we've copied it to our clipboard. And now we would share that with our players. Again, not something to share publicly. You don't wanna share it in an open Discord group or anything like that. But if you have a Discord table with just your players in it and you want them to get to your game, then obviously you need to share this link. So there you have it. That's how to install Foundry. That's how to get players connected. That's how to start your first game and in the next video I will show you how to install maps, how to create players, uh, etc. So I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.